Today's podcast is brought to you by Quantrix Modeler Introductory Training, teaching the fundamental foundation that you need to become a Quantrix Master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Show me, show me, show me how you do Quantrix. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. Fantastic that you join me today for episode number 223, Quantrix over Excel all the time. This is a head-to-head example. I absolutely love Quantrix, and this is why. Way back when, when I was starting Quantrix, I had a great manager who introduced me to Quantrix, and he had a goal one day, and that was to start doing everything in Quantrix, even the day-to-day tasks. And that goal that he set has always struck, stuck with me. And I hope that you will make that your goal to default to Quantrix on your day-to-day tasks. Stay out of that lesser program, also known as Excel, and start defaulting to Quantrix. And here's a perfect example of why you would want to default to Quantrix and not to Excel. So first to that lesser program, uh, Excel with the problem. I know that this is a little unclean to be showing this lesser program on uh, Quantrix Authority, so please bear with me. (laughs) I'll try to get through this explanation as fast as I possibly can so we can get out of this tool. I have here a list of particulates, okay? Uh, They're going down, and then I have them horizontally going across the top. And where they intersect, I have to decide whether they should be a 1 or a 0 based off some logic that I'm familiar with, okay? So there's lots of combinations here. I have over, you know, 48 different particulates. So I can have lots of different combinations, and I need to determine them. Uh, what that combination should be a one or a zero and this is a very tedious task but it's something it's a one-time setup so I have to do it so I've gone ahead and I've done it but I want to make sure that you know this is accurate because it could be very easy to go ahead and fat finger something or get the logic wrong so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do it twice okay and I have done that I've gone ahead and I copied the table and I've entered again the ones and zeros based off of the logic that I'm I'm aware of and the rules that I'm aware of. Now what I want to do is I want to compare these two uh, entries. I want to compare try one to try two and see if indeed they match up because if they do then in theory you know I've I've established two witnesses I've done it two ways therefore I know that they're right if they're not right or if they're not the same then I've got a problem and I need to go back and look at my data. Okay, so what I do is I go ahead and I copy the table again. Again, 48 uh, columns versus 48 down. And then I simply do an, uh, a Boolean statement. And I say, well, does this guy not equal uh, try 1? Okay. And then I go ahead and I copy this down. And I copy it over. And you can see the beauty of Excel, or the lack thereof. And then I've added some conditional formatting to format where I where these values are not matching. Okay. And then here's the painful part. If I want to then compare these, and I want to say, well, I see some red here. These don't match. Well, I got to go find BN46, and I got to compare it to O46. So then what I have to do is I scroll all the way over here and I say, well, BN, well, that's a 1. You know, I've got this combination here, R-E-W-H-C-H. So that actually probably ought to be a 0. But let's go over here and look over here. Yeah, indeed, this is also a 0. And that seems to be right. So I need to go back over here and I need to click off this and I need to put this as a 0. All right. Now I got to scroll all the way back over here and find some more reds. And move on to the next one. Now I got to go find BL48 and M48, whatever those mean, right? So this whole back and forth scrolling stuff, just, I don't think it's conducive. I don't think it's, I don't think it's fun. I think it's kind of a waste of time. There's a better way to do it. And that better way is in Quantrix Modeler. So this is how I would do this comparison within Quantrix. I would take my list of particulates and I would copy them. And I'd go over here to a blank uh, Quantrix model. I'd select the items only by hitting Control and uh, my right or Control click. And then I would go ahead and I would paste them. F1 is not a particulate. So I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to call this from particulate. 
Okay, then I'm going to bring this category down here and I'm going to select G, just the item again. And I'm going to hit paste. G1 is not part of it. And those are my two particulates. All right, I'm going to bring this guy back up to the top. I've got my grid. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another category and I'm going to call this try one. And I hit enter try two and then with try three after I hit enter again I'm just going to simply do a comparison. And the comparison is going to be if try one uh, does not equal try two. Right? Puts in that formula. And then what I would do is I'd maybe take my uh, filter up here or <clears throat> these items up here to my filter tray and try one, I would go ahead and I would enter my ones and zeros based off of my logic and create my combinations. I'm not going to bore you with that because I've already done it over here in that lesser program. So I'm just going to copy try one's values. So I copy them. I'm going to paste them. And then I'm going to go to try two. And again, I would have done this manually. But since I've already got it over here, I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. And then what I would do is I would look at my comparison. And then I would apply some conditional formatting actually to comparison. So I'm going to actually just select comparison. And I'm going to say uh, right click conditional format. And I'm going to add it here. And I'm going to make it red where the value is equal to one. Okay. Then what happens is I simply have to scroll down through it or scroll over and I can see that I have ones. Now here's the beauty. If I want to see what my value in try one and try two are, guess what? They're right here in front of me. I don't have to look at any cell references and scroll back and forth and try to figure it out. I don't have to try to remember or look for colors in some massive grid. It's, it's easy. I can see that I have a 1 here and I have a 0 here. So I look at WHBA. I'm going from that and I'm going to a WHCH. And it doesn't look like there's a BA in here. So I'm going ahead and that should be a 1. When I do that, you can see that it updates automatically for me. Again, I would scroll through this. I can see a bunch of reds and I can do my comparison just right here looking at it and I don't have to scroll back and forth like you were having to do in that lesser program over here trying to remember cell references and what have you. So I think this is just a great example of why Quantrix is so powerful and really for basic tasks that you would maybe default to that lesser program also known as Excel for you really should try to get away from that and you should just try to do everything that you do in Quantrix. The only thing that lesser program is good for is really maybe copy and paste. I will give it that. Anyway, I absolutely love Quantrix. I want to make you a Quantrix master. So please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez.